lobbying? Well, someone who probably gets on the receiving end of some of that lobbying, uh, Iowa Congressman Tom Latham joins us. Good to see you, sir. Well, it's great to be with you today, Mike. This is a little rainy day, but a lot of folks here. Let's talk, you know, there's a lot of talk here about getting the free trade agreements passed and we're waiting for those to come to you so you, you and your colleagues can actually vote on them. What are you hearing? Uh, do you think the, you'll get to those soon? Well, it's my hope that we do because it's absolutely essential uh, for economic development growth in a state like Iowa. It means about 10,000 additional new jobs here in the state. Uh, and it is, uh, to me, outrageous that we don't have these in place with, you know, I've got Korea, which is a democracy in a very difficult part of the world. Uh, that one of our great, great friends. Uh, you look at Colombia, and the coordination we've had is fighting the war on drugs down there, and how they've been such great partners with us. Panama is just a no-brainer. Uh, why in the world we haven't pushed this through? Uh, the administration has been very, very slow as far as getting the work done so they can get it to Congress. I think if uh, there was a vote today, it would pass overwhelmingly, but we just need to have that vote and as soon as possible. We're about to hear, we hope, uh, from Secretary Vilsack uh, about the announcement today out of the White House of the creation of a White House Rural Council basically to uh, help promote rural economic activity and develop public-private partnerships. Uh, do you think this is something that can be helpful in rural America? Well, it, it sounds good, and I, I'm very hopeful that, uh, that it would be successful, that they'll actually put initiatives forward that will help us grow in, in rural America. Uh, the biggest problem today you're seeing in agriculture is the uncertainty they have as far as tax policy, the, uh, some of the egregious regulations that are being proposed, and the threat from EPA, from FDA, as far as animal production. Uh, a lot of these things that have a huge impact. The, the, uh, we need to get our budget in order in Washington so that we're not going to be facing higher interest rates in the future. Now, all this uncertainty is really more important than some new initiative or new council. Uh, if, in fact, we could have certainty in agriculture, if we knew what the rules were going to be, uh, then I think that would be much more important than a, you know, another bureaucratic council in Washington. Let's talk about uh, the budget situation and uh, the proposals, you know, that are all flying out there. What are we going to do? Do you cut spending? Do you, what do you do to address the deficit situation? What are your thoughts on the, the direction we need to go with it? Well, we, as you're well aware, this year we'll have a $1.65 trillion deficit. Uh, and we're at about $14.4 trillion as far as our national debt. The, the president's budget would add another $10 trillion to that over the next decade. Well, certainly, we have to cut spending. We have to get a handle on this budget. We have a great opportunity, I think, with the uh, negotiations that are going on now as far as raising the debt limit. They're, they asked uh, last week you know, to raise it $2.4 trillion without any changes to anything. And that simply is uh, not being responsible. If you're a family and you max out your credit card, you don't uh, just go to the credit card company and ask for more credit. You have to change what you're doing, and that's what is so important. I'm very hopeful that these negotiations that are going on will be fruitful, that will make a long-term uh, commitment to, to bending the curve as far as these deficits are concerned. They simply are not sustainable, and it jeopardizes uh, our future as a country. We're going to be like Greece if, in fact, we don't uh, do something and do something very quickly. Of course, the challenge, can we make cuts without cutting economic growth, without cutting to the point or in the places that would uh, curb economic growth? Well, the, the biggest problem we have today as far as economic growth in this country, uh, I think, is the uncertainty that's out there. You don't know what your taxes are going to be in a year and a half. If you invest something, what are your capital gains tax rates going to be? You can't even plan your estate going forward today. Uh, all that uncertainty, you don't know what the regulatory burden is going to be as far as operating your business. You've got very activists uh, in the, some of the departments in Washington that really think Washington uh, top-down control is the way it should be. And, and it's this uncertainty and not knowing what interest rates are going to be, not knowing what inflation is going to be. Uh, to continue the borrowing is going to squeeze out the private sector like we are. So, you know, while while we're going to have to have reductions, uh, we could grow this economy, we could have economic activity, we could create jobs if, in fact, people knew 
that they could plan, that they would have certainty out there is absolutely critical today, and that's exactly what we don't have uh, coming out of Washington today. And finally, real quick, uh, as we get we look to go to this next farm bill and write the next farm bill, I mean, all that you've described really impacts how that next farm bill will be written as well. Well, I think everyone understands that there's going to be uh, real changes as far as any, any farm bill going forward. Uh, I think it's interesting uh, the Iowa Farm Bureau, the corn growers, understand that uh, certainly the direct payments, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to sustain any kind of direct payments like that. Uh, and as far as individual crop programs, it's going to be very difficult. What uh, I believe will come out of this will be some kind of a, hopefully, a much more robust uh, risk management plan, whether it be based on revenue, uh, and is probably the, my best guess at this point is where it'll come down. Uh, but to have some way to manage risk today for our producers to have certainty that they know that they can, uh, in fact, continue their operations either under adversity, the crop conditions, or economic conditions. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Mike. Great to be with you. Iowa Congressman Tom Latham here at World Pork Expo. All right, we'll take our final break. We are scheduled here from Secretary Vilsack. He's supposed to be uh, calling us. Uh, he's uh, been busy with a press conference this morning on this new rule council. We'll try to get the latest on that next. Stay with us. This is AgriTalk.